Hello and welcome to the class. So the topic for today's class is the Ganes hierarchy of learning and it is related to educational psychology. So Robert M. Gane basically gave a instructional model and the learning outcomes for today's class is to classify the major categories of learning outcomes as presented by Gane to understand and identify prerequisites that uh, should be completed to facilitate learning at each level to understand the learning hierarchies that provide a basis for the sequencing of instruction. So Robert M. Gene, actually Robert Mills Gene, was born in 1916 and he passed away in 2002. And he was an American educational psychologist best known for his conditions of learning. In 1965, Robert Gane published his book entitled The Conditions of Learning. In his book, Gane described the analysis of learning objectives and how these different classes of learning objectives relate to the appropriate instructional designs. Gane pioneered the science of instruction during World War II when he worked with the Army Air Corps training pilots. He went on to develop a series of studies and works that simplified and explained what he and others believed to be good instruction. So this is whole uh, is the theory of instruction as given by Ganes. So it is made of three components, basically a taxonomy of learning outcomes, uh, whereas uh, the Bloom's taxonomy has been divided like this. Cognitive domain leads to cognitive strategies, intellectual skills, verbal information. Affective domain is related to attitudes. Psychomotor domain is related to the motor skills, the learning by doing attitude. Then there are eight conditions of learning as presented by Gane, and there are nine events of instruction given by him, which are as gaining attention, the first step, then uh, informing learners about the learning objectives, stimulating recall of prior learning, presenting the stimulus, providing learning guidance, eliciting uh, performance, providing good feedback, assessing the performance, then enhancing retention and transfer. So this is how we can say that uh, this theory is generally based on the cognitivism and combination of cognitivism and behaviorism. So Robert M. Gene actually uh, has described learning as a change in behavior of an individual that is retained and that makes possible a corresponding change in his or her behavior in a particular situation. So according to him, learning is a process that takes place inside an individual's brain. So the most important uh, aspects of a learner are, are his senses, his central nervous system, and his muscles. So Gene combined a basic uh, behaviorist position with elements of uh, cognitive thought and built a hierarchical model and the different types of learning. So he thus uh, shows way in which a unifying theory may be able to explain how different kinds of learning can be related to each other. So this is the Gane's hierarchy of learning and Gane defined learning as a change in human disposition or capacity which can be retained. According to him, there are eight types of learning arranged in a hierarchical order beginning with simple form and ending with a complex form. So in his view, learning of a new capability requires the prior learning of the subordinate capacities that are involved in the new capability. So these are the eight uh, conditions of learning that is the starting from the uh, uh, last, uh, last one to the upper part that is the signal learning, stimulus response, chaining, verbal association, discrimination learning, concept learning, rule learning or problem solving. So these are the conditions of learning and uh, these are simple to complex part. Although, uh, you know, Gane refers to these conditions as uh, uh, learning types, he is primarily in interested in the observational uh, behavior and performance, which are the products of these learnings or conditions. So in these conditions of learning, he combined the basic behaviorist, behaviorist uh, view with cognitive uh, theory to present a hierarchical model of different types of learning. 
So here are the, uh, you know, the brief description of the types of learning as presented by Gene. The first one is based uh, related with classical conditioning. Uh, the, the experiment which was done by uh, the scientist Pavlov. So here the individual learns to make a diffuse response to a signal or stimulus. Example, an infant smiles at the sight of its mother. So this is the simplest form of learning and consists essentially of the classical conditioning. So it was first described by the behavioral psychologist Pavlov. And in this, the subject is conditioned to emit a desired response as a result of a stimulus that would not normally produce that response. This is done by first exposing the subject to the chosen stimulus known as the conditioned stimulus along with another stimulus known as the unconditioned stimulus which produces the desired response naturally. So after a certain number of repetitions of the double stimulus, it is found that the subject emits the desired response when exposed to the conditioned stimulus on its own. The applications of classical conditioning in facilitating human learning are however very limited. So the individual acquires a conditioned response to a given signal the learning is involuntary in this kind of learning. Then there is stimulus uh, response learning uh, that is related with the operant conditioning of uh, theory of the Skinner involves the connection between a stimulus and a response. The learner is learning to make precise movement of muscle in response to specific stimulus. Example, a child says Papa at the sight of his father. So this is the stimulus and response learning. And this is somewhat little sophisticated form of learning, which is also known as operant conditioning. And it was originally developed by B.F. Skinner. So it involves developing desired stimulus response uh, bonds in the subject through a carefully planned reinforcement schedule based on the use of rewards and punishments. So operant conditioning differs from classical conditioning in that the reinforcing agent, the reward or punishment is presented after the response. So it is this type of conditioning that forms the basis of programmed learning in all its various manifestations. Then there is the chain learning. And uh, this is a advanced form of learning in which the subject develops the ability to connect two or more previously learned stimulus response bonds into a linked sequence. So it is the process whereby most complex psychomotor skills are learned. Example, riding a bicycle. So this is a step by step process or, uh, you know, learning to drive a car or playing of a piano. So this all depends on step by step uh, learning of the things which uh, the activities we are going to learn. So it, the, the various changes, you know, chains to or more previously learned stimulus uh, response connections are linked together. So this is a advanced form of learning in which the subject develops the ability to connect two or more previously learned stimulus response bonds into a linked sequence. It is the process whereby most complex psychomotor skills uh, where these riding a bicycle or playing the piano are learned. Then the next uh, process is the verbal association. And this is a sub variety of chaining that occurs when the stimuli and responses in chain learning consist of words. So it is as the top uh, word says verbal association. So it is related with the words. So example, a child learns the Malayalam equivalent of English words. So he is trying to associate that what does this uh, word in Malayalam means in English. So chains that are verbal, example, a child identifies an object and calls it by its proper name. Like this is an, uh, you know, a black ball, the black ball, or it finds, um, you know, uh, find uh, able to identify which language is Hindi, which language is English, or which language is French. So this is how the verbal association process goes on. So this is a form of chaining in which the links between the items being connected are verbal in nature. Verbal association is one of the key processes in the development of language skills. 
the next one is the uh, multiple discrimination or discrimination learning so here the learner acquires the ability to distinguish two set of stimuli or situations so as to make the response appropriate to each member of the set uh, for example the child learned to distinguish between his mother and his aunt so this is this leads to the discrimination learning he is able to identify among the various women that uh, which one is his mother so the learner learns to distinguish between motor and uh, verbal uh, chains which she or he has already acquired so this involves developing the ability to make appropriate responses to a series of similar stimuli that differ in a systematic way the process is made more complex and hence more difficult by the phenomena of interference whereby one piece of learning inhibits another so interference is thought to be one of the main causes of forgetting then there is concept learning so the concept learning is a common response to a class of stimuli the learner acquires a capacity to respond to stimuli that a class of objects share in common so here we can see the generalization things goes on with classes and discrimination between the classes are learned by identifying the color shape position uh, so we can generalize what things you know if we if we are talking about birds so all kinds of birds name of birds they can identify that these are they, they, this kind of uh, species are known as birds or these kind of species are known as mammals so example the child learns the concept of the bird he distinguishes a birds from a mammal so this involves developing the ability to make a consistent response to different stimuli that form a common class or category of some sort it forms the basis of the ability to generalize classify etc now uh, next is the principle learning or the rule learning it includes the acquiring of knowledge and understanding of relationship between concepts so for example we can say a learner is learning the principle of metals uh, that it expands on heating so they can identify this uh, so they have learned the rule so in learning a rule we relate to or more concepts for example at 100 degrees celsius water will boil so here temperature and boiling point are two concepts related by a rule so this is a very uh, high level cognitive process that involves being able to learn relationships between concepts and apply these relationships in certain situations different including previously encountered so basic of the learning of general rules and procedures are here taken into consideration then the eighth uh, uh, you know condition of learning is problem solving and it is the highest stage in the hierarchy of uh, learning process it involves the application of the principles that have already learned in order to achieve some goal example a boy proves theorems in geometry so at this level as this is the highest cognitive uh, stage in which the uh, you know the student is able to present his uh, you know problem solving attitude so the learner now uses the rules learned to achieve some goals uh, problem solving is the combined product of two or more lower order rules and it thus requires an internal event that is thinking to take place for solving a problem so for example a learner is uh, you know posed with a pro problem to prove that air has pressure now for uh, solving this problem he or uh, she has to learn a few lower order rules uh, such as air can support a, a you know column of water so uh, the weight of air is approximately such such uh, pounds per square inch air pushes upwards as well as downwards so by you know combining of these rules he will be able to solve that prove that uh, uh, air has pressure so this is how the conditions of learning work according to gane so it involves developing the ability to invent a complex rule algorithm or procedure for the purpose of solving one particular problem and then using the method to solve other problems of a similar nature
So this is the Robert Gannett's hierarchy of learning, and we can see that as we goes up, it increases the complexity, and the simplest form is the signal learning, and more to you know cognitive aspects are the upper uh, parts, and the lower parts are more based on the behavioral parts. So uh, these are the educational implications of uh, these conditions of learning. The teaching learning activities should be arranged in accordance with the mental abilities of the learner at each level of the learning hierarchy. The formal education should be planned hierarchically on the basis of the increasing complexities of the different types of learning. Teachers can analyze any significant learning based on the learning order acquired by learner into a progression of subordinate learning. So the teacher should ensure that the learner has acquired the necessary initial state of learning before he is introduced with the new levels of learning. So due weightage should be given to the learning hierarchy while framing curriculum by the curriculum makers. So according to Gene, for each phase of learning, certain internal processes occurs in the learner central service nervous system and the role of the teacher is to plan and control these external events so gene considers a teacher as a designer and manager of instruction and an evaluator of student learner so uh, gene has given you know five varieties of human capacity like intellectual skills cognitive strategies verbal information attitudes or motor skills so what are these intellectual skills that permit the symbolic control of the learning process? Uh, then the cognitive uh, strategies that allows the learner to control his or her own uh, learning process. Uh, then uh, we can say that uh, it is the most important one because it uh, involves the mental operations. Uh, it involves the conceptualization of the environment, differentiating of the things from each other, understanding of the concepts, uh, seeing relationship between things, reading, writing, and handling of numbers are the other abilities which come under this kind of skill. Uh, then, uh, so the, these abilities range from the simple to the complex part. Then there are the cognitive strategies, which uh, you know are refers to learners thinking, remembering, and learning. <clears throat> the procedures we use for ordering and processing information internally, they are learned over long periods of time. Then there is the verbal information that is the cognitive or informational basis for employment. Then uh, there we have the attitudes and the attitudes are deep rooted in us and it is positively or negatively influences the learner's movement towards or away from that which is to be learned. So they determine our predisposition towards positive or negative responses to an object and our attitudes uh, strongly affect our motivation for learning. Then there are motor skills which allows the physical movement necessary to perform the act. So the motor skills are physical skills. And these uh, include the ability to perform a sequence of physical movements. So uh, here we can see that uh, this is how the Ganesh condition of learning works. And this is how it depends on you know, our teachers, uh, depending on the teaching learning process, that they can uh, prepare a plan regarding the instructions. Now we will discuss the Ganesh nine events of instruction that how these nine instruction uh, events of instruction can be prepared and properly implemented in our classes so that we can give an effective instruction so uh, the instructions uh, start with the gaining of attention so this is very important uh, because it posed thought provoking questions if the students in the class are not paying attention that then we need to you know um, uh, attract their attention so this is the reception part so how it is done uh, you know we can show them uh, certain pictures we can you know show them a movie in the starting so first of all we need to gain the attention of the students that we are going to teach you something new today 
or something interesting today. Then you need to inform the students of the learning objectives for the class, why you are teaching the subject, what is the reason for that. Then the uh, stimulate recalling of the prior learning. So that is the you know interlinking of the previous knowledge, then presenting of the content, then enhancing retention and transfer to the job, sorry, elicit performance, then providing learning guidance, providing feedback, assessing of the performance, then enhancing retention and transfer to the job. So the, these are basically the principal contributions of GANE. And, uh, you know, the, uh, GANE has basically uh, categorized learning in terms of learning outcome or knowledge type and identified routine instructional steps that stimulate the varieties, stages of the learning process. So basically, we can say that GANE's le learning uh, hierarchy helps uh, students to reach to the higher level. Now we will discuss in detail about the nine events of instruction. And this is how gaining attention, we will start with the gaining attention part and slowly, slowly move towards the enhancing of the retention and the transfer of the learning. So first of all, we will discuss the first step that is the gaining attention of the students. It ensures the learners are ready to learn and participate in activities by presenting a stimulus to gain their attention. The methods for gaining learners attention include stimulate attentions students with novelty something new to be presented before them an uncertainty and surprise pose thought-provoking questions to the students have students pose questions to be answered by other students then the next part will be the identifying of the objective so you need to you know inform the students that uh, you need you need to help them understand that what they are uh, to learn during the course, provide the learning outcomes, which will uh, they will learn as we discussed in the starting of our lecture, provide objectives before the instruction begins. So this is how they know that what is the purpose behind, you know, the topic which they are going to learn today in the class. So this is how you need to, you know, uh, acquaint them with everything which is very important for them. So this is the expectations what the students are uh, keeping with the teacher in the class while they are delivering the lecture or going to deliver the lecture. Then the next instructional step is stimulate recall of prior learning. It helps students make sense of new information by relating it to something they already know or something they have already experienced. So the methods for stimulating recall includes ask questions about previous experiences, ask students about their understanding of previous concepts. So this is basically the retrieval of knowledge, what they know about this topic or how, you know, they are going to uh, interrelate with the topic. So for this, uh, you need to, uh, you know, know about the previous knowledge of the students. Maybe they know something about this. Then the presenting of the content is done. So here uh, the teacher will use strategies to present and you know uh, the lesson content to provide more effective or efficient instruction. Organize and you know present the content in a meaningful way. Provide explanations after demonstrations. So this totally depends upon the planning part of the teacher that how the you know planning has been done and how the content will be presented before the students. Now, there are certain ways in which the lesson can be presented. And this is, you know, you can give plenty and plenty of illustrations with examples. Present multiple versions of the same content, like by making use of multimedia, videos, demonstration, lecture, or the cooperative activities. Provide instructional support as needed. So like giving cues, hints, prompting which can be removed after the student learns the task of the content so ask some thought provoking question deep learning questions making reference to what students already know help students integrate new knowledge by providing the real world examples so this is uh, basically you know uh, the encoding we can say uh, the uh, Content is being presented among, uh, uh, you know, in front of the students. 
provide learning guidance so advise students of strategies to aid them in learning content and of resources available and these are the methods to provide the learning guidance that how they can you know understand better about the concept provide instructional support as needed like cues hints prompts or the references if you want to give them which can be removed after the students learns a task or content uh, model varied learning strategies like concept mapping, role playing, visualizing. Use examples and non examples. So, in addition to uh, providing examples, use you know other things also so that uh, it helps students to see what not to do or the app opposite of examples. If in certain situation, what happens if this is not the right way? So provide case studies, analogies, visual images, metaphors. So this will also help, you know, in the uh, association, learning association to be done by the students. Then elicit uh, performance, that is the practice part. So this is the responding uh, part of the students. So activate students uh, in processing to help them internalize new skills and knowledge and to confirm correct understanding of these concepts. Now, these are the ways to activate learner processing include elicit uh, student activities, ask them deep learning questions, make reference to what students already know, or have students collaborate with their peers. Uh, elicit recall strategies, ask students to recite, uh, revisit, or reiterate information they have learned. Uh, facilitate student elaborations. Ask students to elaborate or explain details and provide more complexity to their responses. Help students integrate new knowledge. Provide content in a context-rich way. Use real-world examples. Now, the next uh, you know, kind of instruction is the providing of feedback. Uh, Provide immediate feedback to the students, you know, based on their performance and, you know, facil to, uh, facilitate the learning part. So there can be various ways to give feedback. And let us now discuss that. The first one is the confirmatory feedback, which means it informs the student they did what he or she was supposed to do. So you are confirming that you have completed the task successfully. Then there is corrective and remedial feedback. It, in, uh, it is to inform the students the accuracy accuracy of their performance or response. So how much it was correct and what remedy can be done if it is not correct. Then there is informative feedback. It provides information, new, different addition suggestions to a student and confirms that you have been actively listening. This information allows sharing between two people. Then there is analytical feedback. It provides the student with suggestions, recommendations, and information for them to correct their performance. Then the uh, one of the part of uh, you know instruction is the assessing of the performance. So in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the instructional events, you must test to see if the expected learning outcomes have been achieved. Performance should be based on previously stated objectives. Now, the methods for testing learning includes uh, pre-testing for mastery of prerequisites, prerequisites, conduct a post-test to check for mastery of content or skills, embed questions throughout instruction through oral questioning or you know the evaluation part, recapitulatory questions or the quizzes. Include objective or criterion reference performances, which measure how well a student has, uh, you know, learned a topic. Identify normative, uh, norm referenced uh, performances, which compares one student to another student. So it depends that what kind of uh, evaluation or assessment you want to do, whether it is normative kind of assessment or the criterion referenced assessment. So it is very important, you know, to give reinforcement through feedbacks and also to assess uh, performance, you know, to know that what uh, uh, level they have achieved by uh, the instructions which you have given. So this is very much important to bring changes in our uh, the ways we do uh, give instructions in the class. 
Then the last uh, ninth step is the enhancing of the retention and transfer to the job. Like to help learners to develop expertise now, they must internalize new knowledge. Methods uh, which can help learners internalize new knowledge include generating of examples, create concept maps or outlines. You know, so now the uh, students must uh, generalize and be able will be able to you know apply the knowledge in uh, new uh, situations or the unknown situations. So this is very much important. So uh, if we you know if we take uh, uh, if we you know present an example before you like uh, uh, like uh, about the equilateral triangle. So uh, the first step is the gaining of the attention there. You can show various kinds of triangles on a computer screen or uh, through projector. Then uh, you will uh, you know, uh, tell them that why we are going to study this topic. So what will be the learning objective of today's lesson? Then uh, you will try to review the different definitions of the triangles. Then you will, uh, uh, you know, present before uh, the students different stimulus uh, regarding related with the triangle then you will uh, show examples of how you can create equilateral triangle and you can uh, give them uh, many examples or you can ask students uh, you know if they know any examples now you uh, will give feedback whether the information given by the students are correct or not then provide them scores or uh, you know if they if the information given by them is not correct, then give the remedy for that, then assess their performance, and then show pictures of the objects and ask students to identify equal equilaterals. So that means that what kind of retention has been done, done by the students, what do they know, how uh, you know they have uh, understood the concept, how well they have understood that. So for that, uh, you know, you, you want the, your students to learn retain the information for a longer time in their memory so different kinds of principles also can be followed like different instruction is required for different learning outcomes so this we can keep in mind as a teacher that it is not always same kind of instruction will be given for uh, you know uh, uh, delivering any kind of lecture like there are various kinds of teaching methods we have learned uh, uh, during the whole program and we know that uh, for teaching different subjects teaching pedagogy subjects we ne need to know that what kind of subject can be taught with the help of what kind of instruction or what kind of teaching method so it depends and uh, events of learning operate uh, you know on the learner in ways that constitutes the conditions of learning so sometimes the events of learning can also change the specific operations that constitute instructional events are different uh, for each different types of learning outcomes. Learning hierarchies define what intellectual skills are to be learned and the sequence of instruction to be followed by the teachers. So this is very important for our teacher trainees to know about the Ganes, uh, you know, the hierarchy of learning because uh, we have, you know, the learning uh, area part, the learning theories is a very uh, vast area to be covered in educational uh, psychology subject. And we need to understand that that uh, every teacher must be aware of this, that how they can improve and bring changes in their classes. So these are the, we have discussed that these are the intellectual skills, cognitive strategy, verbal information, and the motor skills based on the taxonomy of, uh, you know, the educational objectives. So the verbal information is reciting something from memory, state, recite tell declare uh, then the intellectual skills are the discrimination part the concrete concept defining of the concept the rules the higher order rules then the cognitive strategies are the one type of strategy learning strategy that learners use in order to learn more successfully these include repetition organizing new language summarizing meaning guessing meaning from context using imagery for memorization so uh, this improves learning motor skills are the muscular component that must be learned and voluntarily uh, produced to proficiently perform a uh, goal oriented task so performing a physical task to some specific standard 
Now, attitudes is to choosing to behave in a way that reflects a newly acquired value or belief. So, this is how we can, you know, by going through Gane's ideas, we can uh, find out that learning requires different kinds of instruction and various levels of support. As each student has, you know, unique prior knowledge, the lessons must always address the complexity and the processing level of the learner. So different strategies can be adopted to be required to achieve that those uh, certain learning goals. And both uh, internal and external stimuli affect the conditions of learning. Just as new abilities are processed internally, the classroom conditions should support uh, the learning process. So the learning hierarchy outlines the order of instruction as well as what skills should be learned. So this is how, uh, you know, by with this, we can, you can uh, have a look at the references which are available um, uh, on the websites, different websites, the national and international level where you can find out more about Ghana's hierarchy of learning and what are the conditions depends, you know, in on which the learning can be done and the different stages of the instructions, how it can be prepared. So let us now move on to the next section that is the evaluation questions. And question number one is, what is the first event of Ghana's nine events of instruction? And the options are gain attention, enhance retention, explain objective or none. So the correct answer is gain attention. And this is the first uh, event on, in which we have to, you know, uh, divert the attention of the students towards our uh, instruction. You know, we need to develop curiosity among the students before starting the lecture. Question number two is Robert M. Gene revolutionized DASH principles. The options are instructional design, animation, level or internet. And the correct answer is instructional design because uh, he wanted, you know, uh, to uh, deliver effective and uh, efficient instructions. And so for these, he gave certain principles and rules. Question number three is, student must be told about what they should expect to learn during the lesson at the starting of the lecture. So the options are information of the learning objective, answer questions, have question or clarifications. And the correct answer is information of the learning objective. So this is before starting the lecture, you need to, you know, first gain the attention. And after that, you need to make your students familiar with the learning objective of the class, why you are teaching this particular topic and what they will gain after learning this topic. Then question number four is dash feedback lets the student know their current appraisal of their assignments quality without getting into details about how they might do better. And the options are reinforcement, evaluative uh, feedback, short feedback or knowledge feedback. And the correct answer is the evaluative feedback because in this, uh, the teacher only need to give, uh, you know, the feedback that uh, while evaluating that the what is the quality of the assignment and uh, here they will not go into the details. So this is the evaluative feedback. Then the next question is Dash helps students recognize differences between their work and that of peers to close the gap. The options are teacher evaluation, peer evaluation, content evaluation or picture evaluation. And the correct answer is peer evaluation in which they are able to, you know, compare their work with their peers so that they can know how they can do better. Question number six is Dash teaches ways students can spot areas for improvement on their own. So this is the very important area and the options are self-evaluation, font evaluation, design evaluation or none. So the correct answer is the self-evaluation because this is very important for every student to know where in which area they are lacking and how they can improve in certain areas. So this need to be taught to them that how they can assess themselves. So self-evaluation teaches them such things. Question number seven is be transparent, objective and dash in all assessments and the options are partial, unfair, fair or none. And the correct answer is fair because you need to be fair while you know assessing any kind of knowledge. 
Next question is which of the following is not the Ganesh five major categories of learning? The options are verbal information, intellectual skills, cognitive strategies or teaching skills. And the correct answer is teaching skills uh, because uh, it is not a part of the major categories of learning. The first three one are the major categories of learning. Question number nine is simplest form of learning. Uh, it is the simplest form of learning and it consists essentially of the classical conditioning first described by the behavioral psychologist Pavlov. And the options are signal learning, point learning, rule learning or problem solving. And the correct answer is the signal learning because it is the starting point, you know, where the simplest form of learning starts and uh, the other three are not the, uh, you know, the simplest form of learning. And the rule learning and problem solving, uh, solving uh, learning are, you know, by going higher cognitive strategies, which are the so complex form of learning. Question number 10 is, this is a more advanced form of learning in which the subject develops the ability to connect two or more previously learned stimulus response bonds into a linked sequence. So this is how the different kinds of links are established and the options are chain learning, block learning, rule learning or stimulus response. And the correct answer is chain learning because the various events are, you know, what have been learned at the various stages uh, by a person then uh, linked with the sequence in a chain. And this is how the stimulus response kind of learning, you know, uh, leads to chain learning. And uh, with this, we come to the end of the class and hope you will be able to go through the various references and find out more about Ganesh hierarchy of learning and will be able to use successfully in your class to, uh, you know, efficiently carry out your instruction part. Thank you very much and see you in the next class.